Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC15 in Austin, Texas. And I'm here with Angling Golden, CTO of SGI. How are you doing today, sir? Great, thank you. Thank you for coming. Well, theah. thanks. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, all right. 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 Well, you it's, met you in Frankfurt the last yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. You know, in fact, last time we, we, went, we were at ISC15 in Frankfurt, you talked about some of the changes coming in these, uh, you know, supercomputing architectures, things like new memory hierarchies. Yes. And, and what's happened since? Yeah, so the, you have the uh, three new trends, right? We spoke about last time, socket integration, memory hierarchy, and the increasing focus of HPC uh, on data. Um, and since then, uh, you know, we have been focusing on uh, these two programs, right? The NSCI, uh, the US Presidential Order, mm -hmm. uh, to coordinate uh, supercomputing uh, efforts towards exascale, uh, and the EU Praise program. And we've been uh, working through that uh, to develop our roadmap towards Exascale. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I wanted to ask you about the NSCI because that happened right after we last talked, right? Mm -hmm. It was the end of July 2015. And uh, there, you know, it, it seems like all of the headlines were about Exascale, but there's this big memory analytics component. And that's this is the stuff you've been talking about for a long time, right. isn't that's it? Right. That's right. That's, that's the third trend, right? Yeah. We spoke about ISC. Yeah. It's not just a socket integration, uh, memory hierarchy change. Uh, there is this increasing focus on, on data. One of the big problem is that in, in HPC, typically uh, you have small data going into the machine and then it generates uh, massive amounts of data. Interestingly, in HPDA, typically you're taking massive amounts of data and then uh, through HPDA, you produce a sm smaller data than, than you took in. Uh, it could be as small as a bit, go or no go, right, uh, in HPDA. And this thing in between, right, where you try to bring the two machines together, the HPC machine that generates lots of data and the HPDA machine that takes in lots of data, mm -hmm. if you had to move that massive data in between, it is counterproductive. And in exascale, that will, will only be uh, even more extreme, right, to try and move exabytes of data, for example. And this is where we've been developing what we call uh, the zero copy architecture, where we fuse the two sides, uh, so that you don't have to make a copy or move data. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, that's the big development uh, uh, towards Exascale. It's not just one of creating a HPC system that can compute uh, at Exascale, but also integrating in situ an analysis uh, machine or engine that can do analysis with zero copy. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, one of the things that you guys were, you know, at the forefront of was these big memory computers. Yes. Yeah. And uh, it, it must be gratifying to see that Intel is kind of, you know, making this much more accessible through, you know, their architecture. Now you can build a big memory system. So how does SGI innovate on top of that for, you know, these big data companies that aren't these massive data centers? That's a great question. Yeah. You know, the, f the fact that you asked this uh, at ISC and now shows that uh, you're very much in line with uh, our thoughts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that when you bring a HPC system together with HPDA at zero copy, this side has to be a machine that can take data that uh, are amenable to distribution and also take data that is not amenable to distribution but must stay together. Yeah. Right? There are two kinds of data analysis. One where uh, you can split it up into pieces like a Hadoop cluster, mm -hmm. but there are other types of analysis where it is a, a, a graph analytics, for example, where you really want to keep the data together. And this is where the UV scale up shared memory machine uh, does very well. And therefore, it is our recommendation that in order to do both distributed data, big data, and uh, unified big data, to use the UV machine, the scale-up shared memory machine, SMP machine, to be on the HPDA side of the HPC uh, uh, cooperation. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, exascale is one thing, and we, now we put a stake in the ground as a country, we are going to try to build one by 2023 or something, right? Yeah. But what about the smaller community? That isn't for most people, right? Yes. You guys are getting more and more into the business computing, you know, like the SAP yes. HANA stuff, and I find that fascinating. Mm -hmm. How is that going? Oh, it's, it's going very well. Yeah. Uh, and, and there is a relationship between the two. Mm -hmm. uh, the HPDA side of our world that eventually will be key to Exascale um, is very much related uh, to uh, our enterprise work uh, with uh, HANA, for example. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, and, and recently also announcement with uh, Oracle. Right? Uh, with uh, SAP HANA, we've been doing very well. It's been one year and we have uh, sold 50 HANA systems, large-scale ones, uh, and with a 4.9 availability. 
right? So, the, so one of the biggest concerns for us coming from the scientific world was that we can build big machines for enterprise, but will we stand up to their uh, requirement of uh, reliability and serviceability? Uh, and it turns out the four nines uh, was the number we got uh, after a year. Um, and it's, it's been successful. Um, and we've also been doing a lot of cooperative work on the enterprise side on this new memory hierarchy, as we said, that are coming out. For example, if uh, memory dims were, um, were non-volatile and fast and big, right? Not quite as fast as DRAM dims, but fast enough, but very big. Uh, what would that do for the enterprise? Uh, two things. Uh, we believe on a UV machine with such uh, dims, you can have instant on databases, right? If a system breaks, you repower it back up, everything is still in there because it's non-volatile. And your data structures are already there. You don't have to restart and rebuild. Uh, the other one is looking at ways you can be, need to be smarter about partitioning your databases so that you put uh, the less write-intensive ones, more read-intensive, to the non-volatile slower dims and the write-intensive one to, to the volatile fast dims. So these are the kind of research we've been doing to take uh, the next step forward in our enterprise business. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Go, it's always exciting to me to hear what's going on in this industry. And I, I understand you have something like 40 meetings this week or something like that. Uh, something Last quite, time. yeah, it's been busy. Yeah, it what will is, be busy. Yeah. What is the one exciting thing that you want to go check out this week when you do sneak away from those meetings? What, is there yeah, I like, that comes to mind? Yeah. yeah, I think uh, it, of the three trends, right? Yeah. Uh, we spoke about the data focus is something I like to walk around to see mm -hmm. uh, where all the new ideas are with regards to this. We have our own uh, yes. zero copy. I like to see uh, what are the other new ideas in, in as we focus more on data in HPC. And the other one is memory uh, hierarchy. These new memory technologies coming out not only changes us, but more importantly, it changes our customers. When they write their codes, right? they now have to be even more conscious about where their data will be. So again, the data focus relation here. So I'll, I'll be looking at these two areas, the, the memory hierarchy uh, and, and data focus. Yeah.